Hi everybody, I'm Bree the Plant Lady checking in with a weekly garden tour. It's officially the middle of February and we have been having lovely mild weather here in central North Carolina. That means that there is a lot in bloom, so get ready to be inspired. The number one thing that's flowering right now is of course the Edgeworthia chrysantha. This is one of my favorite winter blooming plants. So let me turn the camera around and give you a proper view. So this is the Edgeworthia that planted itself. You can see this was one I propagated from a rooted cutting. It grew through the pot and it's the happiest plant that I have. And this is also the one where I like to gather the flowers from to make floating arrangements because well, this isn't really an area that I walk to with regularity. It's my work zone for seedlings, but I don't usually have this going until later. But you can see the flowers are amazing. They smell like honey. It is the most intoxicating fragrance. I love bringing these for inside floating arrangements because they make the entire house smell completely magical. You can see there are thousands of flowers to be able to harvest for floating arrangements. I can float till my heart's delight. All right, so it feels like spring. It looks like spring. This is first fake spring for North Carolina. We have like four or five of these moments and then we get cold again. So it's important to cherish it because it's, it's not long lasting. But you can see here at the entrance to the woodland, everything's looking great. This gold rush, Edgeworthia, is also in full bloom. But they haven't knotted upright yet. So you see, you have to kind of get down on your hands and knees to really enjoy the flowers, which is why I like using them in floating arrangements. You can also see I've got a Carex here that is in full bloom. Now this is an Asian species. I've forgotten the name of it. But I do think that the flowers are, are quite interesting. You can see all that pollen, it's just floating out. And above that is Happy Higo. This is a Camellia japonica that was selected for this single large flower with these enormous widespread stamens. And it's actually known um, as the Samurai Camellia because these were selected during the Edo period and uh, planted at the grave sites of samurais because the flowers fall off whole. It's a, a sign of longevity. There's about 200 varieties of Higo camellias, named varieties. I only have the one. I'd love to get more. I absolutely think these flowers are the coolest. They are so distinct and unusual. I know I showed you last week some crocuses blooming. There's more here. There's daffodils coming up. And of course, here's Edgeworthia papivora. Not the healthiest thing, but it is actually healthy. It just doesn't look nearly as good as its relative Edgeworthia chrysantha. This is another snow cream like the one planted by the garage. And here we've got the always magnificent crimson candles Camellia. This is a complex hybrid from Dr. Parks of Camellia Forest. And, you know, it was selected for its landscape value. All these blooms open at one time. So another one of my favorites to float because the blooms aren't so big. So you can fit a lot more into a bowl. So walking through the Camellia Alley, you can see Irrational Exuberance is still putting on a show, as is Igawa Three Seasons here. Um, Freedom Bell back here in the woodland is looking great. And I just wanna show we've made great progress with gravel here in the woodland. We got this done. And look here, I've got another trailer load to be able to put out today. So guess what I'll be doing? <laughs> it's so exciting. And speaking of progress, we've gotten a lot done over here on this side, really since last week when the compost bin got built and kind of undid where the existing compost bin was. You can see how large that peach stump is 
gone ahead and put a pot on it to make it look like it's there on purpose. Um, we got this area seeded, so it'll be exciting to see how that all grows out. And I'm pleased to show good germination on things that I seeded up here a few weeks ago. So you can see here is a clump of grains. I think this is probably rye because of the dark purple hue. And then I'm seeing the spicy mixed greens. That's this because this is a brassica. Now I don't see any poppies yet, but I think we need to get some rain, which is in the forecast for tomorrow. I am pleased to show you that the poppies that I sowed about a month ago are really starting to get nice size. And you can see there's a lot of them. Nice ground plane coverage through this bed. So it's really exciting to see how all of this will turn out. Um, of course, it will be on display during the spring open garden on Saturday, May 11th from noon to 4 p.m. It's free, no registration, rain or shine. And hopefully by then, the greenhouse will be built and we'll be able to actually do our sales out of the greenhouse. So I hope you'll be able to attend. I just wanted to share here that the rosemary is starting to bloom. This is actually pretty normal for our area in North Carolina. February tends to be a month where a lot of plants wake up. And well, it's really quite pretty when the rosemary is in flower. Hey everybody. So here in the backyard, I am stationed to do some serious weeding today after we get the gravel put out. I'm gonna spend some time on my hands and knees really combing through these beds, addressing this major chickweed infestation that I have up here. You can see it's really, there's a lot of great things, lots of poppies and stuff, but it really has like an understory of chickweed, which is my nightmare. So I'm gonna go ahead and spend some time in here really cleaning this out. I also have, well, let's do a quick seedling ID while I'm here. We've got corn poppy right here. We have California poppy here with this silvery cut leaf foliage. We have a bachelor button here. We've got, trying to find all the good stuff. Uh, here we go. Larkspur right here. And we've got bread seed poppies here. But then we've got bad stuff, lamium, chickweed. We've got this little Veronica, which is really tedious to get out, but necessary. Um, oh, here is the henbit trying to learn these common names. But again, lots of poppies within, and you can see here the chickweed is blooming, which means that it's gonna start setting seed. So today is the day, deal with all of this. Overall, it's just a really beautiful day and you can see the daffodils are starting to really bloom and you know, days like this kind of make everything jump. Here at the fire pit, the containers are doing well. And of course the arugula behind here is starting to bolt, which is great because that means it'll succession sow and we'll actually have a fresh crop to be able to harvest this spring. You can see these flowers are quite pretty and they provide nectar for pollinators that are active right now in the middle of February. So it's a really important plant, not only because it's edible, but it has a real pollinator service. And then it self sows and creates a dense carpet just like this to help reduce weeding and eliminate the need to mulch. If you've been following me for a while, you probably remember that I'm not good at keeping my pathways clear, but look at you guys. I really have been putting the effort in and at the open garden, you're gonna be able to walk. Unlike last year where Valentine the Corgi was the only one that could get through this path. <laughs> I have kept my promise to keep it plant free 
And boy, it's really nice to have the access. So yeah, probably should have been doing this all along. And as we come along here, you can see more of those crocuses in bloom. Someone asked what kind they are. And to be honest, I don't know. They probably came from like a bag at Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, but I've had them a good long while. I think these actually came from my previous garden, the flood house. So um, I just think they are so cheerful. These are not the saffron crocuses. That's a different species. And that species doesn't usually bloom at this season. It's like a fall bloomer. Uh, but crocuses are definitely the first sign of first fake spring, which is what we are currently in. I have a lot of hellebores blooming which means I need to make a lot of floating flower arrangements. Because remember, I don't want all of these flowers to seed. This is a particularly nice one because it's actually forward facing. And I really like that burgundy at its throat. A lot of these are just sort of plain white. I also like that plain white feature with the green eye. Uh, really, again, these are for my enjoyment for floating because I'm really conscientious to not allow these to start seeding aggressively all over the garden. Well, you can see Jack's camellia is in bloom a bit, but the plant overall doesn't look very healthy. And that's partly because I had too many plants surrounding it. You can see this side got totally shaded out. And that's because I planted shrubs over here like they were annuals. But I also want to show you that it's time to spray oil. Um, you see, I've got a little bit of scale. It really shows on the front side of the leaf. And well, you can see it there. The white means active scale. So to deal with this, and I will make a video, you have to use horticultural oil and actually apply it to where the scales are. So you need to put it in a sprayer that you can kind of get up all on the leaves and you know the bigger your plant the potential for more um scale there is i think the reason this one is doing so poorly it's actually less to do with being overcrowded and more because our water filtration system actually dumps out right over there and this whole area stays super saturated and i think it's just in too wet of a condition but it's too big, I'm not gonna try and move it. But it's definitely struggling. It probably wouldn't be the end of the world to plant a new one and just cut this one down. I'm not gonna do that right now though. I'm gonna enjoy the flowers for this season. Well, y'all, this maybe should have been called February Affair, but October Affair is putting on a show of flower buds. There's very few that are actually fully open but they're starting to, and these flowers are so amazing. They are just that incurved petal and the super formal double layers. They are extraordinary. So hopefully in the next few days, more of these will open all the way up. I rarely talk about it, but I wanted to show you the olive tree. This is Harlequina, I believe, and it's doing great. This is one that I propagated from a cutting probably 10 years ago. And well, it hasn't set fruit or anything, but it hasn't died. I think it likes this kind of protected spot here. And well, I just love having an olive tree in the yard. <laughs> and as we make our way around here, you can see the Carex Chiricantus under this live oak is really awesome. I like it mixed with the texture of the rhodias and of course this one euphorbia just keeps holding on i had five only one lived this was like a whole edge of them but it's great to have the one nice when they find the right spot they can be really happy tends to be a short-lived perennial here in north carolina well the bridal veil prunus mume still has blooms it's definitely getting past the season Another goal for this weekend is to get that window box replanted with something uh, less holiday inspired. <laughs> that should be easy. I think I'll just do it with sedums for now because I won't be able to keep it watered. I'm going to be out of town. And I think I've also decided that I'm going to take up my 
festive lights today because the cottage garden seedlings are getting big enough and I don't want the lights to kind of get lost when these plants get really large. Again, I'm planning to be out of town for a significant a couple of weeks, a significant time for a couple of weeks. And um, I think preemptively getting these out and probably also take on the task of thinning out the bachelor buttons. I'll make that a video, <laughs> have no fear. It's gonna be painful. Well, the wave is not that exciting, but I need to spend some time on my hands and knees out here dealing with the vetch which is really the main weed of this bed and it's everywhere. Uh, burning it didn't seem to do it, its job, like to really kill it. So we gotta just do it by hand. I'd say the biggest success story out here is definitely the lupins of which there are a lot. So that is great. Uh, I'm disappointed with the poppies. So I might actually, once I get it weeded, I might, so another round of poppies just because we have rain in the forecast and that might help make the seedlings jump but i'm 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 not over the moon about how this looks right now so fingers crossed i'll be uh more impressed in a few weeks time and walking over here to this border of course this is where the mangaves were it looks significantly better without their melted skeletons but I'm so excited to show you that the Iris Unguicularis is in bloom. And this is totally normal to be blooming at this time of year. It's a winter blooming iris. And it's just so charming. It's not the prettiest plant. It usually has these kind of dead tips to the foliage. It's not super robust, but the blooms. Oh, I'm so excited that it's blooming. This came from Pine Knot Farms and they are having their uh, hellebore open houses coming up soon so you should totally go check them out well everybody i hope you've enjoyed today's weekly garden tour and i am gonna go ahead and get busy doing some serious weeding don't worry i plan to take you along so be sure to tune in this week as i continue to post videos and as always thanks so much for watching everybody happy gardening